And Cynthia, I have 6.30. Our guests aren't here yet, but I'm going to start the webinar. Okay. I got it. If you want it. Hello. I guess we'll wait um, three more minutes till 6.35, Jeremy, and then we'll start. I see crime prevention officers on. Not sure if um, Captain Soros is on with them. I'm on. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. Happy spring. Yes, happy spring, but it's cold outside still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're just going to wait for a few more people to join and we'll start at 635. Cynthia, when you're ready, uh, I just need to call roll. Yep, but we'll start do it promptly at 635, Jeremy.
Hey, Jeremy, we're good to go. I wanna welcome everyone to the Joint Committee meeting with Public Safety and Education and Youth, and Jeremy will take roll call at this time. Good evening, everybody. I'm going to mute everybody. And um, when I call uh, committee members, when I call your name, please unmute yourself and then uh, acknowledge your name and then mute yourself again. Uh, these are two committees, so you may be on more than one committee. So please listen to your name for your name both times. Uh, we will start with education. So Cesar Zuniga. Sylvia Agosto. Here. Thank you. Amel Afzal. Alberto Ortiz Almeida. John Body. Here. Thank you. Cynthia Felix. Here. Thank you. Kenny Guan. Nicole Huang. John Johnston. John seems to be having an audio problem. Beverly Kleinman. Present. Thank you. Aurelis Martinez. Damn, they start that thing on the dot. I'm sorry, Aurelis Martinez. Marilyn Melman. Julio Pena the third. Here. Thank you. We will move to the Public Safety Committee. Cynthia Felix. Present. Thank you. Jerry Chan. Ramon Acevedo. Joan Body. Here. Thank you. Kim Fung. Hector Gonzalez. Zachary J.C. John Johnston. Danielle Lai. Barbara, Barbara Lee. Jimmy Lee. Present. Thank you. Paul Mack. Roberto Martinez. Gabino Morales. Present. Thank you. Sam Sierra. And Julio Pena. Present. Thank you. I see uh, at least one other board member who's not on either committee. I will write their name down uh, as I will for anybody else who joins. Thank you so much. So we would like to welcome Captain Suarez, the new commanding officer of the 72 precinct. And before we start with the tough questions, I would just like to give a moment to introduce herself and tell us a little bit about her vision for Sunset Park. Welcome to uh, Community Board 7, Captain Suarez, which takes up Sunset Park and Windsor Terrace. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, clear? Okay, good. Guys, I just wanted to, uh, I mean, I think everyone on here, I mostly probably so far with me, within the last six weeks. If not, I'm Captain Kristen Suarez. I'm the new of the uh, 72nd precinct. I started about six or seven weeks ago, uh, around the first week in February. It's been, uh, it's definitely been a good six or seven weeks here. Um, just so far in general with the community, uh, I'm feeling a lot of support from the 72nd precinct community in all areas of the command and sector, Adam, Boy, Charlie, David, as well as the police officers of the 72nd precinct who've been doing uh, an excellent job uh, my eyes since I've been here. Um, an overall uh, envision for Sunset Park, for the community 72, and for the offices of the 72nd precinct, precinct. I just envision more of a co dynamic. I'm sorry, I, does someone have their phone on? Because I just hear myself echoing. If everyone could just mute their phone and just make sure it's muted. Okay, it's better. Thank you. So, in regards to the community and the offices um, for the 72nd precinct, uh, what I see, what I, from what I've picked up for the last six weeks, seven weeks that I've been here, and what I see definitely going forward 
Uh, I think our community and our offices can both benefit with a very strong co-partnership with one other with one another. I've been trying to personally myself develop uh, my own partnerships with members of the community, with business businesses here, with schools. Uh, we got a lot going on with schools right now. Um, you know, commercial districts, whether it's in all different areas, a lot of the houses of worship and trying to establish those relationships myself. And I expect, and I think I've made that very clear that I expect my offices, whether it's my NCO offices, my, uh, my new youth offices that I have out there controlling the school corridors, my community fair offices, my patrol offices doing the same thing as well, establishing a relationship, a strong relationship with the community which could help us succeed in moving and trending in the right direction, a direction overall uh, for the command and, the, for com and for the community going forward in the future. Thank you. And I just want to um, make sure I don't forget my neighbors up in Windsor Terrace. I know Sector A has the least amount and I see Joan smiling, but uh, I don't want to forget our neighbors up there as well when we're talking about the 7-2. Um, so one of the things that, of course, we want to come up with and talk about was the youth involved incident, the shooting that occurred that involved Lillian Rashkin's high school. If you could just give us a little bit of information on that um, and what are some of the measures that are being taken to ensure that our schools are safe. It was very traumatic because obviously in April, the, we had the mass shooting in the same area, 36th yes. Street, and a lot of the schools went into lockdown again. Parents were concerned. They weren't really knowing what was going on. They were relying, unfortunately, on Citizens App, which I'll get into a little bit later today for information. But can you tell us uh, what happened uh, as much as you could? Because I know it's still an ongoing thing. Um, what are some of the safety measures that are being taken to ensure that our youth are safe going back and forth to school? OK, so um, obviously everyone is aware that we did take a shoot in on 36th and 4th on uh March 7th, Tuesday, March 7th, around, I would say it was about 2.15 in the afternoon. So just to go over a, a brief scenario prior to the shooting. So the schools have become a hot topic within, I was about to say since since I've been assigned to the 7-2, they've always been a hot topic. We're always trying to make sure we're, you know, uh, ensuring that our teachers, our parents, our aunts, our uncles, and our students are able to get to school safely back and forth without any issues, without any violence, without any bullying going on. Um, there was a spree of a couple of shootings that occurred up in Brooklyn North and I think the 90, the 94 precinct, which obviously sent a high alert out overall to the city. So uh, we basically upped our manpower in regards to patrolling school corridors during specifically more during school dismissals. School arrivals, it seems like everyone gets to school okay. Everyone, and it's when the school dismissals and the schools get let out, it obviously gets extremely busy. If there's any violence or arguments that are going on within the schools, it seems to take place after school when they get out, whether it's by the train station, at the park, uh, on their way home. Um, so our right now our manpower in regards to our school dismissals, we developed uh, youth Kind of like the NCOs, the neighborhood coordination offices, we now have youth coordination, sorry, youth coordination offices in which we have um, about one sergeant with six police officers, but we use our NCOs as well. So it's more like a one sergeant with 10 police officers. And we have certain corridors that are mapped out, including the corridor that involved the shooting that week. We refer to that corridor as the Sunset Park Corridor. Um, since I've been here, I've realized, I'm sure prior to me being here, that's a very, very busy corridor between the school letouts, between the 36th and 4th train station, the 59th and 4th train station, um, the delis, the stores, everyone, hang, uh, the McDonald's, a lot of kids hang out at that location uh, and it becomes very congested. And it's a concern for the teachers. It's a concern for the students. And it's a concern for parents who are coming to pick their kids up off the school from school or if their if their kids are taking the uh, transportation home. So specifically on that day, our YCO offices, uh, Officer Collado and Officer Rondinelli were assigned to 36 and 4th. They were there on post at around 2 p.m. parked in front of uh, 371 and Sunset on 4th between 36 and 37 out of the out of the car with the lights on checking out the dismissals to make sure the kids were safely coming out of school. As they were standing there, 
maybe about 10 minutes into there, we refer to it as the directed that they're doing at that location. They heard two loud bangs come from the corner of 36 and 4th. Their attention got drawn to 36 and 4th because they were standing right there and they were on post. They immediately saw an individual uh, who was located at that location, who was involved with an incident, take off running uh, from that location with something in his hand down across 4th, up 36 towards 5th. So our two officers were on post. They ended up going over the radio. They gave chase to the individual as they were running up there. Another witness turned around and informed them that there was another individual who was also involved with incident who was running in that direction as well. They ran all the way up to Fifth Avenue. They saw a bus trying to take off on Fifth. They ended up stopping the bus to do an inspection just to make sure no one from this incident happened to run onto that bus. Lo and behold, both of the individuals who were involved with the shooting were hiding on the bus and good Samaritans and good witnesses that were on that bus did help us um, identify the individuals. And they also helped us to identify that a firearm was hidden by one of those individuals underneath the seat on the bus. So our officers were able to apprehend them with the help of people on the bus, as well as remove uh, the firearm off the bus that was involved with that shooting. Uh, tragic situation, two students from 371 were shot uh, at the deli on 36th and 4th. Thankfully, it was not life-threatening injuries. They were removed to Lutheran Medical Hospital immediately from the scene. I was on scene as well as a uh, chief of Brooklyn South and numerous um, numerous people from, uh, from the NYPD school safety and everything was pieced together. Uh, evidence was found on scene of the two shell casings that were fell from the firearm going off in the deli. There was footage uh, clear as day showing the individual letting off this firearm inside the deli, injuring these two, um, these two students. And at this time they were both arrested on scene and were drawn up on specific charges by our 7-2 priest and detective squad. But um, although the detective squad is the one who's drawn up the charges, our two YCO officers who were on post, and that's why when we come to stress how important it is to our officers to be on post on time, because if I gotta say, if those two officers were maybe five minutes, 10 minutes late to post that day, I, I don't think those two individuals who committed the, uh, committed the shooting would have been caught on that specific day. Um, I can't get specific into details like Cynthia was just saying, but one of those individuals who was involved with that shooting is actually responsible for a few other shootings throughout New York City who was supposed to be in court that next morning at 930 to answer for a couple other shootings in the past. Um, so they both were brought in and they're both being prosecuted accordingly um, with the district attorney's office in Brooklyn. But uh, our, man, our, our goal, I have principal meetings every Monday at 9.30. We've been doing it for about five weeks already. Um, I'm very familiar with all the principals and school officials within the 72nd precinct. We log in every 9.30. I remind them to please log in and share any information that you may receive. A lot of these teachers and, and students, and they hear a little like, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but a little like talk going around within school. There may be an incident after school. There may be one in school. In school. The key with this, as I stressed this morning at my principal meeting at 9.30 in the morning, communication is key. After the shooting, I sat down with the school safety agents. I sat down with the commanding officer of the school safety agents and relayed the message that I need her to get across to her school safety agents. I need them to be openly communicating with my youth officers as well as myself. They have my own personal number. The principals have my personal number. If there's something going on and if we could get the correct amount of officers there to prevent a violent situation from happening. If there's an early dismissal for the day, if there's some talk going around within the school that maybe uh, two kids may be getting into a fight on the corner of 36th and 4th, for example, uh, at 1430, I'm sorry, 230 after dismissals, I want to know that ahead, even if they reach out to me so I can have the correct officers, the amount of officers there to prevent this from happening. Or if we can't prevent it from happening, at least being there to respond. And if some crime is being taken place, my officers can be there to take some action. So those youth officers, those two officers on that day were on post and successfully were able to apprehend those individuals and make an arrest. But I hope to, uh, you know, my goal with this whole thing is to 
have these guys out there. And I, I hope that was a tragic situation for a lot of students. We actually did an outreach this past Tuesday. Uh, we went down to 371 and to Sunset and a bunch of teachers and students who wanted to be involved with the outreach attended it. I had my community fair offices there, my crime prevention offices, school safety agents joined, domestic violence, and my youth offices. And they just did a little touching base with the kids to see how they're feeling. Because we, I got in touch with the principals the day after the shooting, and they said a couple of kids were traumatized by that incident. I couldn't imagine being a 14 or a 15-year-old and exiting school during a dismissal and, and, and witnessing something like that. It's tragic. It's tragic. Um, so we did a little outreach and we have an officer here who I have him pushing. He runs a bunch of youth officer programs. He's actually the he's actually a um, one of the coaches of Sunset Park basketball. He runs the police officer athletic league program here. He runs the Explorer program, the cadet program. He runs a, a basketball tournament, volleyball, volleyball tournaments for these kids. So I have them go into the schools and do an outreach to try to get other kids to maybe leave the violent side, the gang side or whatever may be going on and and try to get more involved with, you know, the department with uh, all these different leagues that we have. Um, it's 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 shown to be very successful. He has almost 55 to 60 kids involved with our programs here in the 72nd precinct. So we have them pushing it and hopefully in the future, you know, it works in our favor and we could get more to join. So between the outreach and between our, our youth offices on post, that's the way we're trying to, you know, go from here battling plus my my meetings with the principals, they have my, my personal phone number. They call me when there's a situation and with just the key is the communication in order to combat these type of school crimes and make sure they don't happen. Thank you for that. Um, I also know that there's some new safety measures that are supposed to be taking place in schools like a uh, buzzer system and um, all those things that was just recently passed. I know that's pretty relatively new. That was just passed by the um, PEP the parent education panel recently that they outsourcing it and they're going to have a camera system and a buzzer system. Can you tell us how you guys are coordinated with that system? If you know any details at all? I'm not going to lie. I haven't been, we haven't been filled in too much about what exactly is being done in the schools to, I guess, up their security measures. But um, it's thank you for bringing it up because when I have these principal meetings every week, I look for a new topic so it doesn't seem like the same roundabout. So I definitely will at my principal meeting next week, see if anyone could fill me in on the exact measures that are being taken in these schools and see what we could do to be made aware of it. Yeah, I just read about it in the news as well. There was a news article that talked about what was happening. I think it's just being rolled out. But okay. I do know that um, due to the school shootings, the mass school shootings that were happening, this was an outcry from parents asking for that, for a buzzer system to come in. So um in terms of the school safety, we have heard that, you know, school safety, there's uh, not enough school safety officers. Are all our schools fully staffed with their school safety officers? In the 72nd precinct, we have our, all of our schools are staffed with school safety agents. Yes. So when I sat down with the school safety, um, the school safety agent CEO of Brooklyn South last week, she brought in a few of her level threes. And like I said, our main point of that meeting was communication between school safety and NYPD. School safety is mostly inside the schools. We're outside of the schools. So they hear a lot more than we do. So my key was, my, my, my main point was how do we get this information quickly across from when school safety hears something to the department, to my youth office, to myself, to my special operations lieutenant. So we compiled, they compiled for me and my youth offices, a whole entire list of all the schools in the 72nd precinct, as well as the school safety agents that are assigned to that school with their direct contact number uh, with the head supervisors on top. And we did the same thing here in the 72nd precinct, starting with me down to my executive officer, my SOL, my YCO sergeant, and my six YCOs. We, we compiled that full list and we basically exchanged the list and the school safety agent CEO blasted that list out to all of her school safety agents. So they have my direct number going with everyone down. And then I blasted hers out to all of the YCOs the YCO sergeant, the quicker we have the communication, the quicker we could do to resolve these issues that are going on and, and hopefully put, a, put an end to it. And uh, the youth officers, uh, you said they're in the corridors. I know you mentioned 36th Street and obviously that, you know, an incident occurred there. So they're also at 59th Street. I'm trying to understand where they are. I know you said you have this, the, the four plus the, the six plus the NCO officers giving you 10 
we obviously have more schools than that. So are they strategically placed like at transportation hubs? <clears throat> so this is the way we the way we're covering it right now in the 72nd precinct and the way we've been covering it for the last couple of weeks, which has been working. So we have a Sunset Park corridor that covers, I would say, about like 34th to um, I want to say 34th to 45th along 4th Avenue. And we have a, uh, officers that get posted along there as well as a supervisor. Uh, and we have that covered at, I would say, 1.30 p.m. till about 4, 4.30. And then from there, we redeploy to areas of congregation within the command. So the areas of congregation that we see the youth moving towards would be the two train stations, which is obviously covered on that post already, 36th and 4th and 59th and 4th. We also see a huge congregation at the McDonald's. Um, on along Fourth Avenue, and then the last but not least, a huge congregation area as it's starting to get warmer out is uh, Sunset Park. Uh, a lot of youth coming through at Sunset Park that we redeploy personnel to um, in part of the congregating areas. The other corridor that we're covering as well uh, with more manpower is going to be in Sector Adam between its 18th, uh, 18th Street between Fourth to Seventh. There's about four schools within that corridor, and I have NCO Adam patrolling that corridor. A lot of buses, a lot of kids getting out of school, as well as they double up with another two officers there and, and control basically this, the dismissal during that time. Now, just because we have those two schools as considered a corridors on my plan doesn't mean that other schools aren't being paid attention to. Um, I don't have the school off the top of my head, but a principal did reach out to me last week there was an incident at one of the schools uh, in regards to arrivals in the morning. A lot of traffic complaints are coming through. So what I try to do is I try to make up a list of a couple of schools that are considered uh, busier than the other schools that don't have school crossing guards is a big issue nowadays. A lot of teachers, principals, school officials are reaching out that they wish they could have more school crossing guards. I post something on Twitter every week with a link for anyone to apply for a school crossing guard, it's obviously a volunteer position with that most people do to, to get the benefits. And it's hard to get people to apply, but we're pushing it. So my job is that I told the, the teachers is try to push it within the schools, try to push it within the PTA meetings, um, the parent teacher conferences. They could either, we're leaving stacks of applications or like links to applications on um, with a bunch of school safety agents at the desk in school. And then also on my Twitter page, I'm putting up the links for anyone who wants to apply. And we just, just keep trying to push it because if we get more school crossing guards, I feel like it would help a lot of these schools out. Thank you. I want to uh, pause for some questions. Okay. Jeremy, if you want to call or do you want me? Happy to do it. I have, Jerry, I have Jerry Chan first. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so my question is, right, you mentioned safe, uh, school safety, you mentioned your department. Are you working with uh, TD34 to kind of help you guys? Because, you know, from, from there, there's a lot of train stations and stuff that kids could go into a train station. I, I don't know if your cop could actually go into the train, a train station and do the patrols. So TD34, Inspector Chung, me and him are actually close. He actually, so the transit districts, their COs, we have three transit districts in the 72 precinct. We have 30, 32, and 34. They log into our principal meetings and their YCO sergeants log into our principal meetings as well to go over any transit issues that may be going on within the schools with the kids getting out or the arrivals. And in addition, we reach out to each other on a weekly basis about what post they're covering and the post that I double up with them. So we're all well aware and all well intertwined with each other's posts and know where their their spots are and that I usually double up at those spots with them as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? I don't see from uh, board members. I see one now. Uh, should I also invite attendees to raise their hands at this point? Yes, please. So I see a couple of hands up now. I'd also invite attendees, uh, if you wish to uh, ask a question, please raise your hand at this time and we'll call you shortly. I have Gabino Morales next. Yes, thank you very much for taking my, my questions. Um, 
I do want to congratulate you for being here for 72nd Precinct. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Commander. Um, uh, I know the last commander, he was doing fine with us, but I know you're going to do fine with us as well. And uh, any support you need, please come back to us and please let us know what you need. And we're going to work together to collaborate, please. Uh, very much appreciate you coming to talk to us. And um, I do want to bring something up about um, just something that happened to me personally, as well as, you know, I've been here uh, in the community for like 25 years. I'm 28 years old, but I've seen things changing and um, I've embedded myself. I've done my duty to embed myself in the community and investigate what things are going wrong in the community. And um, in one of those instances recently, about two weeks ago, I did get beat up. I got um, uh, violated, like assaulted. And I do have a report with the 72nd precinct, but uh, this happened at um, 34th Street and 4th Avenue um, at the deli, New York's finest deli. And what's been going on is that downstairs, how you doing, sir? How you doing? Thank you very much. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so, um, so, so some individuals just came and beat me up um, right on 34th Street and 4th Avenue. And uh, just because they were hosting an illegal, uh, like maybe they were drinking downstairs in the basement at that deli, but they were holding, you know, an illegal, I'm pretty sure it's illegal to host people downstairs in the basement of that uh, business. And I was just wanted to make sure that these businesses get checked, not even when school comes out, but even a little bit after school, you know, people, people, I put myself on the line to protect um, my neighborhood. But this is why I've joined the, the committee. So I don't get myself in trouble, putting my body on the line, but making sure I make a difference by speaking diplomatically and having things solved legally. Uh, but this, this happened, this did happen to me recently, about a week ago. And I'm still feeling the effects of, I had bruising in my head and, um, I uh, do just hope that any illegal activity that's going on with businesses underneath where they operate are being solved, please. Um, and I appreciate that. Like, I just want to know what's being done or what could be done to mitigate these issues, please. Okay, Thank so you. I want to say I'm, I'm very sorry that like that happened to you. Um, obviously, we don't tolerate things like that going on in the community, whether it's the 7-2 or anywhere in the city. So with the information that you just gave me and the part that you mentioned about something illegally going on in the basement, such as the party. So we do things in the department. My special operations lieutenant usually runs it. They're called SLA inspections, business inspections to ensure illegal gambling, drinking, smoking, and stuff like that does not go on. So I'm actually just made a note of that. Um, when he comes in tomorrow, we're gonna I'm gonna have a sit down with him and see if we could set something up. I just have one question that could probably help better with doing an inspection there. Is this something that you know that goes on every day or is it something that goes on like on a weekend? Uh, yeah, so uh, certainly it does happen every day. Okay. But uh, usually on the weekends, there are more people. I know most of the people there that are downstairs because I've been better myself in the area, okay. but most of the people down there are innocent, but... Uh, uh, we just need to make sure they're not even there because there is a school right on the other corner of that area. And uh, if they could come up and do this to me, I mean, what says that they could do that to anybody else? You know, yeah. Um, okay. just trying to make sure everything's operating well. And I do appreciate your help if you guys could do something about that. Yeah, I'll definitely take a look into that. And like I said, I'm sorry again that you happen to be a, a victim of a crime over there. We'll see what we could do in regards to, uh, I have my guys definitely do an inspection over there. Um, thank you very much. We have a lot of faith in you. Thank you. In this community. I have Pat Ruiz next. Hi, how are you? And, and thank you for uh, showing, uh, showing up and, and giving us this information. My concern is the recent muggings of seniors in the Sunset Park area. Do you happen to know, I only know of the two that I heard about on the news uh, last week. I'm concerned as to what the numbers really are. Have they increased? Is, are these just isolated incidents? What, what's being done? Ma'am, ma sorry, the, the, the phone went out a little bit. I heard you say isolated incidents before yeah. that. I okay, not a problem. Can you hear me now? Because I yeah. don't have problems with my laptop. Pat, uh, I'm also going to bring that issue up in about two minutes. 
So okay. If you, okay. So, so, then so, so if you want to hold on for two minutes, it's actually on my list of uh, concerns from the community. And Captain Suarez, she's referring to the male seniors that have been robbed since February in the community. Okay. So um, this is uh, uh, a big problem that's been going on specifically along 8th Avenue. And I actually went over this at the, um, the community council meeting last week. So from February till I'm going to say March 11th, so mid-February to March 11th, we did take three elderly robberies between the hours of 3 a.m. till about 6.30. Uh, and it, it involved elderlies getting off the train station at 62nd and 8th Ave, which actually uh, falls in the 6.8. So they were getting off of the train station and they're making a left down 8th and they're coming down 8th. And unfortunately, a uh, few young individuals were standing on the train station, I guess, waiting for someone who looks like an elderly who's more vulnerable to get off, following them along 8th. Then they come up behind them, push them down to the ground and remove whatever's on them, whether it's a cell phone, currency, uh, license, some things like that. So we came up with a when we when we had after the second one and we realized that it kind of was going along around 8th Ave. Our squad did a deeper dive into the cameras and we saw the individuals who are uh, young, a couple young men were coming off the train and following them. So me, Transit District 34, as well as the 6A precinct, came up with a deployment plan in which one of the individuals was actually apprehended last week um, by the 6A precinct. Um, and they actually have placed under arrest, charged with the robbery, and we're working on apprehending the other two. It actually happens to be a citywide pattern going on right now. I guess they just found that this train station over here was an easy target. The same type of things with these three individuals were going on as well in Manhattan and in Queens. So they're taking the trains, they're looking for elderlies and they're trying to push them. So I was kind of giving out advice at the community council meetings. We do have one placed under arrest, but that doesn't mean that other individuals are out there. Uh, as of right now, there hasn't been no crimes taken, probably because they know that we took one of them in and they're laying low. But I was just trying to advise at the community council meeting. I know we all have the right to ride the train whenever we want to, but uh, maybe just looking a little bit after our elderly, our grandparents, and if they're not riding the train after 3 a.m. between the hours of 3 and 6, I mean, those are dangerous hours to begin with, whether it's here in the 7-2 or anywhere. Um, but people do got to ride the train, and, and, and I'm not looking for all these elderly to become victims of crime. Uh, uh, one lady, she was pushed down in the 6-8, and she actually severely hurt her leg. So, um, like I said, one was apprehended. We have an apprehension plan that's still into effect right now that we're currently paying attention strictly by 8th Avenue and by the train station over there between the hours of 3 to 7, and the 6-8 on the other side is doing the same as well. And hopefully the other two, it seems like everything's getting pieced together and the other two that were involved with this should be apprehended uh, within due time. Thank you. Okay. Pat, you're good? I I am good and I'm sorry about my... If you can no, no, I, thank you for bringing it up. I get to check it off my list. Woo, woo. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Captain. You're welcome. I have Jimmy Lee next. Hi, uh, thank you, Captain and 72 for your great work. Um, yeah, uh, definitely uh, in regarding to uh, robbery targeted on the elderly, uh, especially uh, I would say we need more outreach to uh, like, uh, cause uh, Sansa Park we have um, non English speaking population. So we need to have outreach to uh, Spanish speaking population and also uh, Chinese speaking population to uh, get offer them tips and also, you know, uh, uh, letting them know, you know, help uh, is available if that happens. Because sometimes, you know, uh, because of language barrier and also uh, cultural stigma, they might not report a crime, you know. So that's important. And the other thing uh, I want to uh, also to bring up is uh, what happened today, you know, in our neighbor, Bensonhurst, you know, one um, driver sped through the red light and then caused two deaths and five people um, injured in that terrible car accident. So uh, my question is, I mean, you already uh, addressed a little bit in earlier, like uh, putting more manpower in like uh, around the school, you know, uh, area. I would say also 
um, because Sunset Park, you know, like on Fourth Avenue, Fifth Avenue, and Seventh and Eighth, you know, those hot spots, you know, we uh, we hope, you know, there will be more like um, more check like uh, manpower there uh, at the intersection to make sure to keep those bad drivers in check because um, you know um, it's just crazy you know uh, broad day daylight you know in the afternoon this could happen because some reports said that the driver was drunk or something you know yeah uh, the, the the situation you're talking about I just heard about it that was in the 6-2 precinct and it seems like the driver was intoxicated so unfortunately with someone being intoxicated things like this do happen and tragically i think two people uh passed away but in regards to sunset park um we have our ftu offices the new offices that are out there i have them posted sunset park i know it's getting busy over there there's a lot of people besides traffic driving around and doing their job to issue summonses and pay attention to drivers i have ftu offices i try to get four in that park in the evening every day on the nice days because I know the, the scooter situation in the park is messy. I don't like it. I don't like the mopeds and the electrical scooters. And if you guys could share this information as well, I am telling my offices to enforce the mopeds and the scooters being driven in the park. They shouldn't be in the park. They almost recklessly struck someone recently where my offices stopped him and issued a summons. So I have these guys paying attention to all these things going on within the park and it's easy to be a victim of crime in there. So there is presence in there and there will continue to be presence in the park. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Jimmy. I have uh, Jerry Chan again and uh, then we will get to the attendees. Jerry? Yeah, I, I just want to follow what, I mean, add to what Jimmy's saying, right? This neighborhood is made out of a whole bunch of uh, folk from different overseas and stuff. Yeah, how, how are you like putting an uh, officer that's actually speak the language, right, on, on 8th Avenue? Because uh, I found out what Jimmy said, right? I had a, I received a message from, from people from the neighborhood saying that there was a guy going around grabbing females behind. And, and, and by the time the cops got there, no one really could communicate with the cop and the people just left. Okay, so are you, so you're talking about uh, the forcible touching situations that's been going on in the 17th Okay, so. No, the the avenue, yes. no, he's not talking about the two that are uh, the sexual assaults that no, are. No, no. He's so just what, talking in general. In general, which. Yeah, yeah there's, there's, a, there's a guy, yeah, there's a guy that going around, an Asian male, going around the avenue and touching a uh, female behind. He okay. said it wasn't he said uh, it wasn't reported because by the time the officers got there, the the victims couldn't communicate with them. OK, I'm not aware of this situation. I am aware of a force. There is a forcible touching situation going on right now that um, special victims has been working. But that's going on along Fourth Avenue. But I will uh, take a look into it. So you said an Asian male has been going up to females and touching them along 8th Ave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, and you know, you know, yeah, the and, and, then go, and going back to the, I Sorry. can give you the information. I have no problem giving you the information. Yeah, even I can right. take going back to offline. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going back to what Jimmy was saying, right? Because I, I know previously, right before your time, we do have Asian uh, officers that speak the language in this area. After uh, a couple of them either left or retire. This whole right. neighborhood on this side, right, is, has been turned into a, 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 a like reverse back to like the old days. People double par, people doing trash, people selling stuff, people just doing everything because there's no more enforcement from the 72 precinct on the 72 side. Remember, A Avenue is divided from 66 and 72. Now, now 72 is no longer doing anything at the border, right? So it's like wow, wow, rest over here. Okay, so I actually met with one of the uh, uh, senators in regards to a couple of quality of life issues that are going on along 8th Avenue. We do have offices in the command that speak all different dialects, uh, whether it's Spanish, Chinese, Mandarin. Um, and if you're, if you're suggesting that maybe we need more offices that speak a specific language along maybe in that sector, I'll definitely take a look into it. Listen, if it's going to help our victims, and our victims feel better communicating and we can get the message across. The last thing I want to hear is that the victim can't get his or her message across because of a language barrier. 
besides the, the language thing, we also have the language line that my officers use all the time. It's actually on our department cell phones. And we dial when we realize that we don't speak that language and they communicate with, uh, a, what do you call it? A translator on the phone. And that's how we get the message across. And then we realize, okay, this person speaks his dialect. Let's see if we have an officer over here who can actually speak in person. The situation about the Asian male touching females on 8th Ave, I will definitely look into um, and see if my NCOs on that side are aware of it. Uh, if there's any further information you could provide on that, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, even if it's a description or exactly when this occurred or how many times it occurred. Yep, 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 that, that's perfect, right? I, I, I know, I understand that there is a translation service um, on the phone. <laughs> But by the time the translation happened, it it take it take a long time. People would just leave. That it's easier just communicate with somebody directly that they speak the language, right? No. Rather than to translation service. I, I you have to remember though too. Sometimes it's hard to have everyone on scene at that moment be able to speak a certain language. So the first thing they're told to do is get the translator on, and then if they could get through the translator, and then we actually get the language, my officers will have no problem calling someone over. It just sometimes these things take time to, to get that message through. Oh yeah, I, I, I understand that. That's what I'm trying to say that maybe why, because again, this thing was made up of uh, almost everything, especially in seven, eight, six, seven, eight side is mostly Asian, right? So by, you know, by, by you tell me that me, what you just told me that, but you also told me that you don't have enough Asian officer, right? That speak the language in your precinct. I didn't say we don't have enough Asian officers. I don't have the list in front of me right now that I could tell you how much. I'm just saying that if it, if it, if I could take a look into it to see what different dialects, this gets all documented on our, you know, that's something I would have to look into. I don't know exactly what language everyone speaks in the commands, but if it would help to have someone up in like certain sectors that speak a specific language, I could look into placing that officer into that sector if it will benefit the victims from crimes in that area. That's what I'm saying. I said I would take a look. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we could take it offline. I don't want to hold up Cynthia's uh, agenda. Thank, Thank you. you. I will send an email to Susan. Your, okay. Your uh, community. Please. Thank Cynthia, you. Cynthia, I'm going to move to uh, public now. Yes. I have Giuseppe Scarcella. Uh, Giuseppe, you can unmute yourself now. Well, yes, I can. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Thank you for taking me. Uh, I wanted to know if you were aware of, you know, some um, some of the complaints uh, regarding the quality of life and traffic concerns along Second Avenue near Forty Fifth Street after the opening of the amusement park over here. Uh, is that the urban air? Yes. I'm actually, uh, that was brought up to me at the community council meeting last Tuesday. And I actually just had my communi community affair officer reach out to one of the employees there. And I'm trying to have a sit down with the manager or uh, head director of the by the end of this week. Okay. I, I, I personally have been to a few of these meetings uh, in the past couple of months. I know some of my neighbors have also. Yes. Um, it's it's a circus here on the weekends. I live on 45th between 2nd and 3rd. It used to be a quiet block. And I mean, I, it's a disaster now, really. It really is. And the traffic is terrible. Uh, I don't know how ambulances are getting to the hospital along 2nd with everybody double parked and doing illegal U-turns. These like yeah. the customers come out of there, they throw their trash all over our street. So it's it um in regards to the complaints, is exactly, I talked to a few individuals last Tuesday who have obviously the similar complaints. The one thing is the business is there, so the business is going to be ran. Who um, who gave permission? I know that's usually was a quiet area. I could see now it's turning, seems like all commercial industry things are moving in, and I'm sure more will come in in the future. But what I can do is have a sit down with the manager. I think there's a lot of miscommunication from what I heard without speaking to anyone there that they actually do have a parking lot, but they have no signs up saying where the parking lot is. And people are just double parking or parking all over and no one is aware that there's actually a legal parking lot where they could pull into. So I'm definitely gonna bring that up and see if they could post signs somewhere, even with arrows pointing where the exact parking lot is, because I'm not sure myself, I haven't actually visited the area 
And then the thing with the trash, um, I'm obviously going to have to speak with them. Like, do they have a dumpster? What's their process to throw garbage out? Because unfortunately, Department of Sanitation could be called in and people could be ticketed, especially businesses for stuff like this. So hopefully I can have a sit down with them. We just were actually my community affairs officers were just calling them a couple hours ago. And I'll hopefully have a sit down with them by the end of this week. All right. Because I'm looking outside right now and there's cars at the hydrants right now. I mean, it's only Monday. I mean, I would invite any anybody to come down on the weekends and see like the circus this is turned into. And maybe we need police officers here because this is going to be a congregation area on weekends when school is out and it's going to turn into like what it's like at mcdonald's right so maybe we can try to prevent uh that from happening all right we'll take a look into it yeah all right thanks thank you i would also like to welcome brooklyn south safety supervisor i see um joining us um and if I don't know if they want to say anything about some of the safety measures they're taking in the schools. I know Captain Suarez did a pretty good job, but I know they came on. So we're going to move on. But if they do want to speak. Um, hi. You're mute. So you're muted. Good evening. Good evening. I'm sorry I'm so late. <sighs> Good evening. Welcome. So uh, we did go over some of the crime prevention things that were happening, uh, especially for the youth. If you just would like to introduce yourself and uh, talk a little bit about what the school safety does in some of the schools. Yes. So I'm Associate Sanders. I'm the executive officer for the 72 air precinct area. Um, and so what we've done, especially after that shooting that occurred across the street from P371, we enhance the support for the task force to come and for other um, of our FIAs came out and some community affairs personnel from school safety was there to assist and get those things, um, make sure that nothing else happens on the perimeter of the school. But in those type of situations, that's what we do. We enhance our deployment so that everyone feels safe and that the schools feel safe in the area. And so those are some of the things that we've done in conjunction with the 72 precinct. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna go on with the agenda, but if you would just stay joining us in case people have any questions for you. Um, so related kind of to the youth, uh, we've seen an increase of graffiti gang symbols and signs. One was on Capitol Bank, it was removed. I went up there today. And I did see it was removed. So there have been some concerns and also some concerns regarding um, uh, the sexual assault that you referred to earlier, the pattern sexual assault that happened on 54th and 4th and 41st and 5th. If you could tell us a little bit about that, um, as well as um, the jewelry store shooting that happened in broad daylight right after the Asian, uh, the multicultural Asian lunar celebration that was kind of scary that happened in the middle of the day. Um, Pat went over the male seniors that would be in Rob since February. And then the last thing was citizen app. And I am guilty of this. Uh, I need to delete that app because it brings up my anxiety levels to no end. Um, just this weekend alone, there was reports of a person stabbed, jewelry stolen at gunpoint, a dispute after a car crash, a business robbed, shots fired, assault by four men, someone throwing chairs on Fifth Avenue, and a man robbed by a group. And I know we can't always go by what those things are, but it does seem like there's an increase in the crimes that are happening just looking at Citizen App. Um, but so if you could talk about those things and we could start first with the increase of graffiti gang symbols that we are seeing because sometimes that's indicative that could lead to more youth violence because I noticed on the one on Capitol Bank because I live down the street, um, somebody wrote something, a gang looked like a gang symbol and another gang wrote over it. And I know that leads to conflict. So if you could talk about what's being done about um, covering up that graffiti. Uh, okay. In regard, can you hear me? I'm not on mute, right? No. Yeah, we could hear you. Okay. So sorry. In regards to graffiti, um, I mean, we have a graffiti coordinator and what we usually do is we try to go around the crime prevention officers. If they go around and they observe and they see graffiti, we try to encourage if they're on businesses, if they're on homes, we encourage them 
to file these reports because we have a partnership with the city where we could get the paint and we do graffiti cleanups. What you're saying is 100% correct. If you see graffiti signs, does it mean something in regards to gang relation? It could, it could not, it could just be scribble scrabble. A lot of these kids that actually do graffiti, um, when you do a deeper analysis into it, they're really not gang members, uh, which is, which sounds bizarre, but, um, but oh, it's just an overall analysis of majority of the graffiti symbols. Either way, it doesn't matter if they're gang members or not, graffiti is ugly. No one wants it on their buildings. No one wants it on their house. I wouldn't want to walk out of my house and see graffiti. So um, you guys as a community, I encourage people and I encourage you guys to tell the community to call 911 and file a report so we could get a report done. We get a partnership with the city. We have we bring in youth officers, we bring in the crime prevention, the NCOs, and we do weekend cleanups, especially when it gets nicer out. Uh, it's something that every command does on a weekly basis. So um, I push for people to file reports for it. You also could do self-reports online on the Omniform system and file the graffiti report. And then uh, my guys will go there, we'll take the pictures of it and we'll forward it over. We always, every graffiti, graffiti tag, we forward over to the Vandals Task Force. They're a specific task force who analyzes all of these graffiti tags and lets it know and lets us know, especially me as the commanding officer, if it's possibly related to gang or not. Um, so it's constant communication in regards to these tags that go up. A majority of them lead to not being gang related. But like I said, either way, it's not nice to look at. And I encourage people to file reports so that we could help with the cleanups. So is it a 911 or a 311? You could do, no, 911. It's a 911 report. Okay. You could Just do making it sure. But I think you'll get, you could do a 311, but I'd say, uh, you know, graffiti. If you see someone in action, definitely 911. It's you and I don't know if anyone's seen anyone graffiti someone before. It's one of the hardest arrests to ever make because they're so good at it that they literally could graffiti a whole side of a building within seconds. I, I've seen it mm -hmm. one time and it's very hard to make a live arrest in that. But if you see someone, Call 911 because it's it's an accomplishment actually for an officer to grab someone doing a graffiti live. Um, but I say rec I recommend call 911 and push also the businesses to make the report so we can help clean up. I'm all for cleaning up and getting rid of graffiti. So right now, if we see any graffiti in the community, we could call up and request for a cleanup. Yes, right. we're clean up. We'll take a report. We take pictures. We forward the pictures over to the Vandals Task Force. They communicate with me to let me know if it's possibly gang related or it's just a young individual who goes around putting his tag up or her tag up everywhere. And we help the business clean it up. We set up a thing as long as the business signs a waiver and then we get the painted and we set up a schedule and clean up. Great. Thank you for that. And well, I want to move on to the sexual assaults that have been happening on 54th and 4th and 41st and 5th. It seems to be the same individual. Can okay. You tell us a little bit about that. Yes. So we took two, uh, one on February, I'm going to say February 23rd and February 26th. Uh, it happens to be in my eyes and in special victims eyes, it's the same individual. It seems like it happened between the hours of zero 0700 to zero eight o'clock in the morning when, uh, the female left her home and was like on her way to work. No one was followed for these two incidents. No one was followed well for transit. They left and they were on their way to go to a bus stop to go to work or were on their way to get to actually work. And the individual was scared away by someone else. Um, and then took off. Their poster is the poster of this individual is blasted all over my Twitter. I've been working with the special victims lieutenant um, in charge of the case to see if they have anything new or additional. We have a couple of persons of interest that have came up in the last two weeks, but they ruled those individuals out and they're still looking for them. Um, I would recommend um, between the hours of seven and eight is where, like I said, we're taking the hits. So just people going to work, females going to work along 4th Avenue. Uh, I know the time, the time went what? The time went ahead. So now the sun's coming up a little bit earlier, but just to pay attention to their surroundings, we put our AirPods in, we put our earphones in. Sometimes we can't hear. Uh, and if we do have any more victims, if they could come into the precinct, I think with the two situations that occurred, unfortunately, we were not notified till later on. So there was no investigation that was done on scene. Uh, which doesn't matter. The guy will be caught regardless, but be a little bit quicker if someone made the call, if something happens or if someone else witnesses someone 
being grabbed or groped by an individual if someone called from the scene for a quicker response and a quicker investigation. Okay, There's thank you. All over those. So if anyone, you know, uh, we've been posting it. Special Victims has been posting it. Uh, uh, DCPI has been posting it. So if anyone has any information, there's contact numbers on the bottom of those posters. Anyone can reach out, call, and even make an anonymous tip if need be. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah. The jewelry store shooting that happened in broad daylight um, right after the multicultural uh, lunar celebration. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? It was kind of scary because it was the middle of a uh, afternoon, sunny yep. afternoon. Yeah, that was Sunday. Right Fifth Avenue. Yeah, Sunday, February 5th at A&M Jewelry Store. So unfortunately on that day, there was a procession, a procession that did occur, occur earlier in the um, with the Asian community. Uh, both of them have nothing to do with one another, not related. An individual did walk into the A&M jewelry store, entered the store, looked like he said something, let off a couple of rounds. Thank God no one was struck or killed. It was just a grazed wound, like a scratch. One of them grazed the employees there, took off, hopped on a moped. This is what my big, uh, my big no discretion with the mopeds because the mopeds, he hopped on the moped took off down the block. By the time 911 responded, he already cut off and was gone from the location. Uh, thankfully, like I said, none of the employees were seriously injured. One was just grazed with one of the bullets that flew by. And we caught the individual, I wanna say seven to eight days later, we ended up doing uh, video footage, tracking the video of where this individual did go on the scooter, which traced him all the way from Fifth Ave, all the way down to the water by by, uh, what is that, Bush Park? Yes, but by Bush Park, where some of the clothing of the individual was left, as well as a few bottles. They did a DNA trace, and we, the name ended up coming back to a known individual within the 72nd Precinct who does have a huge history. He was caught coming out of the barber store on Fifth Ave by one of my public safety officers like a week after, was placed under arrest, and is currently in and is not coming out for a while. Great. Thank you for that update. We appreciate it. Um, also, we seen, and I follow your Twitter, so I've seen that you've been doing a lot of outreach about the increase of scams that yes. have been happening. Um, can you tell us about some of those scams and what are some of the things that people could do to protect themselves from them? So in regards to the scams, obviously, number one thing is everyone knows it's tax season right now. So we've been telling, we've been giving out uh, a lot of tips at our meetings, as well as my crime prevention is going around within the community uh, to not have the checks sent to their house for people who don't have direct deposit. We recommend to push that you do direct deposit or have the check sent to the post office where you could just do a pickup at the post office. That way there's no middleman. Unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of mailbox phishing that goes on and it becomes heavily during tax season with people digging in to the mailboxes and then a lot of people don't get their uh, their tax checks back. So we try, we've been pushing that. And as well, there's been a bunch of grand larceny scams in regards to people, people leaving their doors unlocked overnight in vehicles. And in the vehicles, people still leave their wallet, their cell phones, uh, expensive sneakers, expensive clothing, individuals are walking around in all sectors. It's not just one sector, it's it's every sector and it's all over New York City. People just walk around checking door handles until they find one open. And then they look around the car and see if they got a jackpot or not, if there's expensive sunglasses, cell phones in there, which people nowadays st still leave in. I go home every day, I lock my car, my family thinks I'm crazy. I always hit the button three or four times, even right before I go to bed, just to make sure, okay, I lock my door before I go to bed. Just got to become a habit. Make sure the door is locked. And even if it's not locked, don't leave expensive items, currency, money, jewelry in the vehicle because they peek in. If they if they can't if they can't get the handle open, they peek in, put on their flashlight, see if something expensive is in there, break the window, take out what they want, and then leave the location. So we've been giving out a lot of flyers and a lot of tips in that in all sectors of the seven two, not just one sector. Um, specifically, I'm trying to think any other grand larceny ones. Oh, the checks from the bank. Which one? They say, oh, can you deposit my check and give oh, me cash. Okay, so a couple, that's actually a good one. A couple have went on along Fifth Avenue at specific banks, uh, Citibank, where individuals have been waiting outside with, say, for example, a $1,000 check. 
and asking someone who walks out of the bank that they don't have an account there. And if they could please take this check and cash it in for them and give them the money, the check, they end up giving the individual money. The check ends up bouncing and this person ends up losing the money. If anyone's standing outside of a bank or an ATM and is asking you to cash a check for them, it's for a bad reason. There's no, everyone nowadays has, they could go to a payomatic. You could go to a check cashing place. There's banks all over, uh, Western unions, there's no reason individuals should be waiting outside for another individual to come out of a bank and asking them to cash their check. So definitely relay that message. It happened twice at a city bank in the 72nd precinct. They're doing looking at into video footage in regards to it. I don't think it's the same individual. It seems like a bunch of people do this, but if you guys could spread that word around to not be cashing anyone else's checks. That's um, good information to have. Thank you. Um, also, like I said, it just appears that uh, based on Citizen App, and I know it's not the most reliable source, um, there was a lot of activity happening this weekend from Thursday on, including a person that was stabbed, um, a dispute after a car wash, a robbery, some shots fired, someone throwing chairs, a man robbed by the group. And just how serious should people be taking the Citizen App post or these things that are really confirmed? Because I've always get screenshots of them that people send me and say, hey, is this really happening? And most of the time, I really don't know because I know that it's not the most reliable source, but sometimes it does have accurate information. So in regards to Citizen App, I'm not going to lie. Obviously, I'm not crazy familiar with it because I I, 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 I live it every day, but I would, um, I'm not sure how it works or who plugs the information into citizen app or if they even give you guys final dispositions. No. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know. It's not a hundred percent accurate. And if people are concerned, uh, I could tell you right now, the 72nd precinct, we are the lowest in crime year to date in the whole entire Brooklyn South. And that's out of 13 precincts. We're currently down 40% in crime in every single category from 259 crimes this year in total to last year, 438, bringing us down 40.7%, which makes us the lowest in Brooklyn South out of 13 commands. So we're trending in the right direction and the officers are out there doing their job. Uh, since I've been here for the last six weeks, I have I've had nothing but good experiences with the offices out there hustling. Uh, I, I change deployment constantly based on where the patterns are going on. A couple of things we just discussed, the robbery pattern with the elderly. I see that's going on on the midnights. The manpower is going to go to the midnights. The school shooting. We got people doing school shooting. Then we're going to put we're going to put more more presence along these corridors, whether it requires overtime or not. I'm going to ensure that we buff up those areas or beef up those areas to ensure there's presence out there and hopefully get that person who's looking to commit a crime to turn around and say, wow, there's a lot of cops out here. I'm not looking to do something. So I, I could reassure you that we're definitely the lowest in crime in Brooklyn South year to date. And the 72nd precinct is trending in the right direction. And I would not hundred percent. I don't know, like you just mentioned about the dispositions. A lot of these jobs that we get after an investigation is done, it ends up being maybe a non-crime, something that something came over the wrong way. So if you're not getting the dispositions as we get on our work phones or on our radios and it's not coming over on the citizens app, then you're, it's probably not the correct full information. Yeah, like I know some of them are like triple or double. Like yesterday, they had the same thing posted like three times in the same location. And I assume there was the same thing, like a man robbed by a group, it said. Uh, but it reported it three different times periods. And I assume because it's the same location, chances are something happening at six o'clock, then at seven o'clock, then at eight o'clock. That's not realistic to believe that, that it was one incident now reported as three. So mm -hmm. it makes it appear like there's more things happening than may be happening yeah. in the community. Um, okay. So that's why I wanted to clarify, because I know a lot of people look at Citizen App. It does give you information about what's happening, but they don't give the deposition and they don't necessarily tell the whole story. Uh, and it makes it appear like more things are happening than maybe. That's why I wanted to get some of the stats from you. So I'm happy to hear that we are the lowest in crime in Brooklyn South. Congratulations to you and the officers for that. And that year to date, we are the lowest. Of course, we'll get the comp stat from you um, after the meeting to share with the community. Um, 
And like I said, um, in terms of the quality of life crimes, thank you for bringing up urban air to our attendee. That has been something that has been troublesome as well as some other traffic concerns. So I am glad that you guys are on that, especially the mopeds and the e-bikes on the sidewalks. It has been um, quite a challenge um, for people to walk on the sidewalks. Also, I've noticed um, on Fifth Avenue with the vendors, some of them are parking on the sidewalk or taking up parking spots um, to have garbage and things like that. So that's something also that should be looked at because okay. um, they take up spots and um, they put um, garbage or they put um, merchandise on a metered spot um, that causes that. And, you know, we don't want a terrible tragedy to happen in Sunset Park, like happened in Queens where someone actually got beat up um, for parking. Um, and we want to make sure that everyone here is safe. So um, thank you for uh, giving us information. I know that uh, the XO reported to us previously about abandoned vehicles. And I know there were some huge vehicles recently removed on the Third Avenue. Yes, we've been we've been looking into, uh, um, unfortunately, um, we've had uh, one of our huge property locations, which was Erie Basin and located in the 76 precinct. That's was one of the NYPD's largest location where we tow a lot of our big vehicles, scooters, bicycles. That place went under fire, I want to say, back in January. So it's been very hard to pull large machineries, large trucks, large tractors because of location of where we would drag them to. So we reach out every Saturday. I have my guys do a check with all the rotos within the areas to see if they could assist us. We're pulling another. RV from under Third Avenue. And I went over this with a few people. I saw them, I think my first or second week here and was curious to why all these RVs were parked under Third Avenue. And we started working on it and we got help. And I think altogether, since I've been here, we pulled about four from the location under Third on a couple of side streets. We also knocked on a few individual doors in which, in the, oh, hold on, my thing went out. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah no. we can hear you. Yeah, it, no, my 20% my, uh, came off. Uh, we knocked on a few individual doors, including myself, where people were actually living in them and came out and they were instructed by me that they have to leave else they will be ticketed or this thing will be told whether they're there or not, I'm going to end up taking it from there. And people started leaving. There are still a few under there, quite a few, and it's a work in progress. But um, the message is definitely getting sent out that, when a truck becomes available, one of them will be removed every weekend. If I have to just take one at a slow pace, at least it's moving in the right direction and it's being done. I, I, you know, I understand, um, you know, times are hard and I guess people are buying these things and sleeping in them and they're saving money, but everyone's hardworking people. We all pay rent and you can, can't park illegally under uh, the BQE. I don't even know how those people would sleep with the noise coming from the BQE to begin with. So if we have to tow them, they will be towed. Thank you. And I see we have some questions now, Jeremy. Yep, I have John Johnston. Hi, um, I have just two brief questions. Of the people of the crimes that are happening oh, in the summit in the 72 precinct, how how many of them are repeat offenders? <laughs> and as I live in the Windsor Terrace end of the district, um, anything particular going on in the Windsor Terrace end of the district? So the, your voice, sorry, was a little choppy. I heard something about repeat offenders and, and Windsor Terrace. How many, uh, how many repeat offenders are you rearresting in the in, in the 72 precinct? I, I can't, I, the exact number of how many were repeat offenders, I don't have that on me. A few that we arrested recently, uh, including the individual with the elderly, um, including a burglary issue that was going on, were repeated offenders. But when I say repeated offenders, it has nothing to do with specifically just the 7-2. They're also committing crimes in other boroughs as well. Understood. Specifically for the Windsor Terrace, there's yes. uh, in Sector Adam, um, a lot of car break-ins have been going on, uh, specifically people leaving the doors open on some situations where they're removing a lot of jewelry and then other situations where people are just breaking into the car, looking around and seeing if they find anything in there. Uh, there's a car of interest in regards to this. It's actually a white, um, a white Dodge Challenger. The individuals who are driving it, no one has any information on them. 
that's the most information I have on specifically associated with that pattern with the breaking into the cars. Um, could could individuals be crossing over from other borders into the command over there? It could be a possibility. That's why I'm in touch with the 70 and the 78 precinct who was on the border right there in regards to who their person of interest are in regards to the same situation. Besides the grand larcenies in Sector Adam with the car break-ins, the only, there was a construction site over there. It seems like a 1150 prospect that got burglar, burglarized twice, um, maybe about 30 days ago. Uh, I don't know if it's an inside job. That was my first uh, my first thought. Uh, it seems like the individual who owns that construction site did put, we gave him crime prevention tips to put better security up, ring cameras, alarm systems. And ever since they put that all in place, they haven't taken a burglary there in regards. Uh, in regards okay. to those about the two for Windsor Terrace that come off the top of my mind. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I have Jerry Chan next. Hey, thank you. I, by the way, congratulations that the crime rate is actually uh, uh, trending low. But here's my question, right? It, it, do you, how many of those crimes, right? I mean, going back to my original question, right? Because in, in my neighborhood, I, I know my people very well. They don't like to report anything, right? Because again, language barriers and stuff. Out, out of the, the trend that you see, right? How many of those crimes it was targeted at the Asian neighborhoods. If you, if you don't have the answer, it's fine. Uh, we, could talk, we could talk, take that offline. I mean, I don't have a specific breakdown for the Asian neighborhood in Sector David, which is more, more where the Asian neighborhood is. Obviously, the elderly pattern that we went over before with the individual following them off the train, but all those victims, there's four victims that we currently have, three in the, three in the seven, two, and one in the six, eight all four victims were an Asian. I think maybe two were Asian out of the four that got off the train and got assaulted. And then the other pattern that's currently going on is a, uh, a robbery pattern as well, but that includes an Asian male who is, uh, who's robbing other Asian establishments in the middle of the night. We have a person of interest. We don't mm -hmm. have it as well. I have a Yeah, I, I know there's a lot of identity, identity death around here, right, uh, that it, 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 it be hitting the Asian community a lot. I know the, uh, the, the council women's office has been helping a lot of Asians uh, in this neighborhood trying to figure out, get their claim back. I don't know if those are reported. Uh, this, I, this I, is, you know, it's, you, you, go ahead, CEO, what, go ahead. What I'm gonna recommend, because you, I think you brought this up more than once that a lot of members from your community, which you're saying the Asian community don't like to report crimes. I need the community to encourage them to come report crimes. If they don't feel comfortable calling 911 to their house, even if they come down to the precinct, we have someone that sits at the desk uh, that answers the phones here 24 seven. If they, if they don't feel comfortable calling people to their house, don't wanna draw attention to at least come into the precinct um, and report the crime because that's how my stats will be accurate. The more people I have reporting crime, the more I can do to help the person. If, if, if people don't report it, not in just, you know, the Asian community or any community, if people are avoiding reporting crimes, the nervous, I get it, the situation, then it makes it a little bit more difficult to solve the crime. So I encourage people, I encourage the community, if people come to you with complaints to, if you even want to walk in with them uh, and ask for, if it's a, um, a certain dialect that needs to be spoken and we'll look into getting an officer or a translator to get the correct information and do what we got to do to solve the issue. Right. Okay. You know, let's move on to the next person. I don't want to hold people up. Thank you, Jerry. I have Sylvia Augusto next. I um I was at the precinct meeting um last week, I think. Okay. And uh you had mentioned something about burglaries in the 39th Street, 6th and 7th Avenue. A burglar going into a building that they're ringing bells. This is a great place to talk about that. That that individual, I I actually brought him up uh, earlier. That was one. Oh, of the I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's okay. I'll just go over it one more time. That was one of the individuals that was apprehended by uh, our neighborhood coordination officers who found out he was involved with burglaries here. That was his latest burgs. Prior to this, he did about ten other burglaries, and they were looking for him in the Bronx in Manhattan, in Brooklyn, 
And then he finally ended up over here in the seven, two, he was outside ringing. I went over this, like you said, you had the community okay. council. Yeah. Anyone who's ringing doorbells outside, please pay attention. I give that tip out. Do not just let the person in. I know it becomes an annoyance because we probably think it, they're ringing the doorbell for someone else, maybe a delivery guy, an Uber driver, an Amazon driver. The individuals of this specific building ended up letting the individual in after about 20 minutes. He just sat there pushing all the buttons, walked in, checked the doors until one was left unlocked, which one was, and went in and removed a bunch of property. Didn't hurt anyone, thank God, and left. Um, we automatically jumped on it in the 7-2 right away. We recognized his face. We found out where he was staying in the 7-2 that exact night, and we sat on the location until he came walking out and placed him under arrest, and he's actually currently in at this time and looks like he's not going to be coming out for a while. Okay, and there was, somebody told me that there was an incident today on 33rd and 4th. About a, gun, about a gun. There was nothing with a firearm today on 33rd. Not a confirmed. If it might have came over as a job, one of those fake jobs, sometimes that comes over. But an actual uh, firearm job or an arrest or a shooting, no, nothing today. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And to Sylvia's point, that was one of the citizens app things. <laughs> Oh, that was unconfirmed. Um, That's exactly what I, I heard it from one of the parents at the school. Yes. So um, that becomes a concern getting that. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about, um, I got this uh, from another neighborhood group um, that I'm part of. And they said that the latest way that people are doing, they're going door to door pretending to be home affairs officers asking people, um, they have documents and letterhead from the Department of Home Affairs and they come in and claim that they're looking for identity cards. And um, like you said earlier, it's important to check people's identity and who they are and people to know that this is not a true initiative of the government. So I was wondering, do you have PSAs in different languages that we could share with the community? I know you post mm -hmm. a lot on Twitter and Facebook, but not necessarily everybody's on Twitter and Facebook or elderly don't know how to use Twitter and Facebook. So do you have PSAs in different languages that we could share or put up in stores? Like how is that being communicated oh, besides social media? We, we, we have literature that we could, are you looking for us? It sounds like you were asking for you to receive it so that you guys could share. Are you looking for us to share it? Well, but, we, uh, Jeremy, we always include as part of our report, any okay. attachments that you have. So if you have any PSAs, when okay. uh, the community board sends out the meeting notices, they include all attachments that okay. that are available. Okay. And now we also I have many people who live in the community in different <laughs> parts who would be happy to, like Jerry, for example, would be happy to give out some stuff. I'm volunteering him, but he would be happy to put it out on Eighth Avenue. We have Gambino, we have John Johnston and Joan Body who are on Windsor Terrace who know the community and could give it to the stores. So at least it's out there. Because I know you do a lot through social media, but not yeah. everyone's on social media. Do you guys have an email address that I could have my officer email you a bunch of tips to? Yes, and Jeremy could share that with you. Okay. And if you're looking to get into Winston Terrace, um, I also am a part of the PTA, local PTAs. You can, I can have your community affairs officer come to the PTA if you want to as well. That'd be great, John. That John Johnson had a great idea. He said if the community affairs officers or the NCOs could report at some of the PTA meetings to talk about some of these things, he could um, do that at least in Windsor Terrace. But as part of your principal meetings, that may be a good idea to give out these materials during the PTA meetings as well. Okay. And um, Jeremy put the put it in the chat. We also give a lot of these tips out at the Builder Block meetings that we hold. Uh, every quarter as well in the different sectors. But if you guys could give me the email address, I could I could email a bunch over for you guys. Let me check. It's in the chat. Okay, I'm gonna go into the chat right now. Thank you. And um, the last question it always comes up of the shelter residents, um, and the homeless shelters, the hotels. Are has that uh, been a great issue? I know you said there has been a lot of decrease. Okay, in regards to the shelters, I kind of started up a new thing. Um, every two to three weeks, I'm doing a, we're inviting the shelters to do a Zoom meeting 
We actually had our first one last week. Um, we had a few of the shelters log in. I cannot force the directors, I guess they would be referred to. I try to get the directors to log in to share tips with me because I'm trying to understand what their rules and regulations are, how they work things, what time is the last call for a bed. Um, some of them have security that actually do perimeter checks. Some of them don't. So I got a lot of intel last week doing my first uh, shelter Zoom meeting from uh, three individuals who logged in who were very, very helpful. Um, they, I guess they're considered directors of these locations. And they told me that they were, I guess this is the first time any commanding officer has ever logged in with them and went over a bunch of rules and regulations and kind of went over what our complaints come through, our quality of life that complaints come through from the residents of the 7-2 and what they can do to help me to bring these issues down or resolve these issues. Um, so we're actually having another one next week. They told me last week they were going to spread the word to the other directors of the other shelters that are from the 72nd precinct. And hopefully I can get a few more people to log in and it becomes a biweekly thing. And uh, it seems like they're looking to work together with me and move in the right direction um, with you know, decreasing the quality of life issues that may be affecting the residents of the 72nd precinct. Okay, and then the last thing that I have on my agenda, the 311 responses, um, or in many cases, some of the community members are saying they're not responded to the 311s, they're closed immediately. Can you just tell us about the percent of closure for the 311 responses? Well, for, I don't have the percent in front of me, the closures, but I could tell you one thing, if they're not responding to the 311s are such a hot topic within the police department, they've been for a while. Yes. There's been officers that, not specifically here, but I go to personally roll calls myself. There's been officers and they've been instructed by myself. If you respond to a 311 job, you're not just to drive by, look out the window. If it comes over as a noise complaint or someone standing on the corner and they drive by and they don't get out of the vehicle because they see no one at the location and they continue driving and then mark it, eh, that's a negative in my book. They got to park over on the side they to get out of the, to get out of the car, even if they don't see the actual, uh, the actual call at the location and investigate something to ensure maybe that person didn't go around the corner or walked. The, a full investigation is supposed to be done for every three on one. So if I if it does come to my attention that my officers aren't handling three on one jobs in the correct manner, then there's going to be disciplinary action from me coming to my officers in regards. And I've instructed um, my officers that numerous times. And we also have other investigation units who oversee from a distance and unmarked cars and watch to see if these officers are properly handling three-on-one jobs, getting out of the car, doing a correct investigation, trying to do a call back and making sure we're helping the public. Uh, so far, I haven't gotten any complaints from anyone, another unit saying that my officers haven't been doing the job. I've actually got a compliment recently. So I would hope to say that my officers are out there answering the three on one jobs correctly and ensuring they could do what they can to keep, you know, the public safe. Well, thank you for that. I'm glad to hear that there's been an improvement because it has been a big issue uh, citywide and in particularly in our community. Many members have come on on previous meetings to say that 311 court has been ignored or closed within two minutes of them putting it on. Um, so if you would just send us the stats for that so we could include it in our report, that would be great. And I think Sylvia has a hand up. Thank you. I'm sorry. I forgot to say that I called a 911 call the other night. One of the businesses on our com in, in the community had left the gate open and I was scared. I was like, this, everything's in there is going to be gone if, you know, it stays that way. And I called 911. They came and they responded right away. They waited for the owner to come so that he could close the business up because the gate somehow or another never went down the way it should have. Was that well, Friday? Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was, I, was I was working. I heard the job come over. I was in touch with the supervisor. They thought it was possibly a burglary, but then they did a further investigation. They said the owner was coming and they stood by until the gate got shut. Yeah, but it was, they were so, you know, they were great. So thank well, you. Thank you. Jerry? Hey, thank you. Hey, um, so I I'm planning to do, I'm, I'm actually the uh, co-chair with or Cynthia. Um, so I'm planning to do a, a, a weekly uh, office hours 
to to invite people from the community to come here to talk about public safety and stuff. Happy to if you uh, if for you guys to join us uh, to 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 like listen to the community. What are some of the concerns? You're mute. You're, you're mute, Captain. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 The meeting information. When do you guys do this? What is it? Once a month? No, no, no. I'm planning to do it once a week. Okay. Uh, well, you yeah. guys, you let, let's, can you email us the upcoming dates and then I'll see which ones I can make. I, I'll definitely try to get into at least one or two. Yeah. Let me finalize with the, uh, uh, Cynthia first, and then I will let you know, cause I need to okay. finalize uh, everything. All right. All right so, so, so what he's trying to do, Captain Soros is to get the community to talk more about the crimes that are happening, exactly what you said and making them feel comfortable with officers. <laughs> in the community okay so that that'd be great kind of like your principal meetings but with community people yes okay yeah. that'd be great I'm and just Jeremy, a problem i also bring you solutions yeah. got a couple of solutions together right that's the way we work yep and yeah, jeremy absolutely. if you can make julie uh brockway uh panelist she has her hand up Julie, you can unmute yourself now. Hi, uh, good evening, everybody, and thank you. Um, it's lovely to meet you, uh, Kevin Suarez. Um, I'm the co-executive director at Center for Family Life, and I just wanted to um, appreciate all the good work that's going on. Also, just to let everyone here know, you know, a lot of the work we were talking about earlier with young people, um, we still are open seven, uh, six nights a week with our Beacon programs at PS1 and PS503, 506 for the community and on Saturdays. Um, in addition to having um, opportunity right now to remind everybody that summer youth employment is available for our young people in this community. And as we work together toward all of the collaborative safety measures we're doing and seeing the strengths that our young people bring, I just wanted to remind the community that these are resources that are available for free in our neighborhood. And we're looking forward to collaborating um, with all of you and with our captains. So thank you very much for being here and for all this information. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. And thank you for reminding us of the great work of Center for Family Life. They're a very valued partner in the community and bring many opportunities for our youngest uh, students. Um, I see them um, in all the schools and thank you for the great work you're doing and partnering with our schools. And perhaps we could have you on a later meeting talking a little bit about some of the things that you do. So thank you, we appreciate you. Are there any further questions for the captain? Or the seven two. Great. With I don't see any further hands up, Captain Suarez. I would like to thank you for joining us today, for being with us. We look forward to having you at our meetings. Uh, it was a very robust conversation. We're very glad to hear that the seven two is trending in the right direction, um, both for our youth, and we're very concerned about the youth. So we appreciate your our transparency with us and letting us know everything that was happening and how we could support you both as the public safety, as well as the youth and education committee, how we could support because uh, we wanna make sure everyone is safe in the community, especially our youngest ones. And we just wanna thank you for taking the time to be here with us. We hope you're able to join us to our general meetings. Normally when we had them in person, we had the captains are invited, the commanding officers are invited, but this is a great start. And we look forward to having you at further meetings. We also want to thank the Brooklyn South School Safety Supervisor for being us with us today. And uh, thank you, school safety agents, for taking care of our students in the schools. Um, and however it is that we could support each other, we're looking forward to doing that, to work in collaboration, like you said, to make this a more transparent uh, and community-led uh, process for safety in the community. So thank you for that. And if folks want to reach you, what is the best way? Because I know sometimes folks have questions that they may not want to ask on the panel or concerns that they may have. What is the best day or the best way for them to um, get to you at the 7-2? I'm, I'm going to put right now in the chat, I'm going to put my direct email address. I'm typing it in as we speak. Thank you. That's and smart. has there been changes? Um, so I know that I normally send out who are the NCO officers so that people can know that as part of the report. So if you could also send the names of the youth coordination officer, and I know you have a new crime prevention officer. 
so that I can make sure I include the names and addresses in the report, um, the names and email addresses rather in the report. That would be great. So folks know how to reach the NCO and the youth coordination officers as well as the crime prevention. Okay, and that's the BK07 email, right? Yeah, you can send it to Jeremy and he'll forward it to me so I can okay. include I'll it in the report. That's the uh, best way. I'll send the updated NCOs and the YCOs and the crime prevention. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys for having me and everyone have a uh, have a safe week. Yes, have a safe week and happy spring, everybody. Yes, happy spring. Bye bye. Thank you. And thank you, Executive Officer Sanders, for putting your information in the chat. I will note it down so we include it. Thank you so much. Bye. Have, Have a, a great, great night, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.